welcome to the One Million Years of Joy podcast. I'm Dr. Andrea Benacar, your host, and my intention is to inspire you to find more joy in your life through the stories from our guests and the science on joy and purpose. I'm delighted to introduce to you today Heidi Spector, who is a phenomenal artist that is exhibiting her art all over the world. And we're here in her studio and you can see some of her pieces. And I'm so excited to welcome you, Heidi. And I'd love for you to tell us more about your artwork and your journey. So welcome. Thank you so much, Andrea. And thank you for inviting me on your podcast. I'm thrilled to be a part of your journey and to have you part of mine and talk about this. So thank you so much for having me. Wonderful. So take us on your journey as an artist. Where did it begin? What inspired you to do the type of art that you do today? And tell us about the evolution, because I have been collecting your art for many years now, and I have seen how beautifully you have blossomed as an artist and I think the fact that you're exhibiting internationals is a testament of your creativity, your success, and your, the originality that you have behind your pieces. So tell us more about the inspirations and ah, the evolution. You. <laughs> thank you. That's such a beautiful, beautiful words to hear. Um, well, basically, I, I'm just so inspired by color um, and the the reaction that it gives to the viewer. The color for me, the, how I evolved into working with it is um, I was working in my studio and I started to explore the, the movement of geometric minimalism, which took place mostly in the 60s. And I started researching many artists that inspired me, um, Canadian artists like Jack Bush and Guido Molinari and American and British artists. And this movement really gave me a feeling of joy, like of excitement. And I wanted to explore that and see how, you know, this would create a certain feeling in my own studio. And once I started working with all the color, I just found that I felt myself quite a sense of joy. And that, you know, that feeling translated to the viewer and the collector. Um, and uh, so this made me feel wonderful, you know, when people like you and, and other collectors would um, give me feedback and say that the work made them feel joyful. And so then I just, that happened about 15 years ago. And, and then I, you know, just the, the journey continued from there. Beautiful. And when I look at your art, it's really exuding so much positive energy, so much joy. And it just brightens my day, honestly. And I'm so happy that the other collectors that basically you've been working with for so many years feel the same. Just looking at your pieces is an absolute delight for the eyes, for the soul. And Thank it's you. just incredible. Thank you so much, Andrea. I, I feel so honored to hear that because that's my main endeavor is to, you know, make people feel, you know, my sense of my own sense of compassion towards others and wanting to make people feel happier, to give them joy. That's exactly, you know, the, the point of my art. And there's a positive message within my art. So, and I also, I, I work a lot with reflection. So I'm working with resin. In my outdoor sculptures, I, I work a lot with polished mirrored stainless steel. And the idea is that the viewer can feel a part of the painting and interact and feel, see their reflection, feel part of the color. And I think that in that, that, that kind of phenomenon creates like a, a sense of optimism. Well, in my studio, I just love to listen to music. It's a huge part of my inspiration. And uh, often the, I think of it as like each uh, piece is like, it's like a playlist because each piece has its own particular song it was inspired by or musician. I, in that way, I remember each piece as I was creating it. So, um, and often when I do a commission piece, I ask 
the client what is your favorite kind of music and I listen to that in my studio so um, as I'm creating for that particular client and I'd have to say during the creation of this work a big influence has been the music of Led Zeppelin um, and also Smashing Pumpkins. There's, there's a rhombus piece here that we're looking at which is one of my favorite pieces actually and um, this piece is is created is inspired by a song of Led Zeppelin and um, the title of this piece is you are the sunlight of my growing so in this sense I I'm thinking about a spiritual journey of finding joy and contentment with myself with and hoping that others will feel that way as well over here I have been inspired by the music of Smashing Pumpkins and uh, this one is called In You I Taste God. This one is called In You I Feel So Pretty. So there's you know each time I'm creating in my studio the, the music is just a huge part of it. Fantastic and Heidi as I'm looking at these different shapes is there a particular inspiration because you have as much the cube that I'm looking at here to these columns. I know you've done also statues. You're now also creating round pieces, hard pieces. I guess I've always been a lover of math <laughs> since I'm a little girl. And I, for, for, for me, like geometric minimalism, just like the, the, the ideas and the creativity is endless. And I love that I can work in many different formats. So working with the rhombus for me is kind of like an expression of of that you can just go anywhere you want to be it can go in every direction and so somehow this type of shape makes me feel a sense of freedom and and happiness and so some of my favorite pieces are in the shape of the rhombus and in the cube I, I work a lot with cubes and I love the fact that you can go all around it and it's like a almost like a although it's a cube it's also a circle of life and that you can feel the the, the movement go throughout the cube um, and so I'm also doing outdoor sculptures um, which are very often related to poetry as well so I'm, I'm very inspired by the poetry of Khalil Gibran um, and talking about uh, joy and sorrow. I've actually created a, a sculpture that's called Joy and Sorrow. So I, I'm just into, you know, exploring and expanding. But at the core of each piece, it, it's always about love and joy. You have an upcoming solo show in Toronto. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, I'm so excited about it. I've been working the past six months to create a body of work of sculptures and paintings. And uh, the exhibit will take place at Galerie de Belle Fay in Toronto, in Yorkville. And so I will be exhibiting about 25 paintings and sculptures. So as you're talking about how you faced rejection and so on, what advice would you give to someone that may be struggling right now? Maybe they're in a very dark spot in their life because of various challenges, personal challenges, professional challenges. What advice would you give to those individuals to step outside the darkness? Well, I feel very strongly that because I've done it myself where I'm in a you know, difficult place, sometimes I just isolate and I just go deep like into myself and I have to remember that I need to reach out to others. I need to get out there and do things. I need to, you know, just force myself like it, you know, I have my studio and I could, I work like with my assistant, but we're, you know, it's, it could be like, it's not a big environment. Um, and so I just push myself to go out and do things and not, you know, um, just keep things to myself. Your advice is so spot on and there's scientific evidence behind this that we need the support of others in dark times and the natural tendency is actually to go towards the isolation route and not talk to anyone and, and so exactly and especially important. during the pandemic um, you know so many people have been isolated and 
that's been difficult. It's very difficult on mental health. So I think now that we can go out and do things, whether it's just go to a museum and see art and see people or get out for a walk or anything, just, you know, it's just important to force ourselves, push ourselves to get out there. What advice could you give humanity if we were actually to bring more joy to this world? Every person's actions, big or small, can contribute. So I think just the smallest of gestures can actually make a difference in another person's life. And then, you know, that can be paid forward. So I really believe in that concept of paying it forward. So even like the smallest thing, like, for example, letting someone go in this in front of you in the supermarket checkout, like and just letting them go ahead of you because they have one thing or whatever. And they'll realize that you were kind, you know, and doing a kind hearted gesture towards someone that has like no, you know, reciprocity, like no, it's not transactional. You just want to be kind for no reason. And I think if more people were doing those kinds of things, it could make a difference. You know, you just never know what people are going through. Um, sometimes when you might honk at someone if you're driving or whatever, and you don't know like that person's life, like what they're going through. And, you know, you could ruin their day or you could make it a better day just by giving a little bit of tenderness and kindness. I think that for me, that's what I try to think about when I go about my day of what I can do to, to make someone else's life better and release their suffering. So that would, that would be my way of contributing to humanity. If we were to take away your titles, your achievements, where you're coming from, what would be five words that you would use to define yourself? I'm creative, I'm sensitive, loving, kind and I'm a deep thinker so you know sometimes it's hard to be a deep thinker but you know it's it's brought me where I am so I have to be grateful for that as well fantastic what makes you grateful for your life and all the achievements you've had especially with everything that has been going on in this world whether it's in the last year in the last two years with COVID and so on what are you most grateful for I would say I'm most grateful for just, well, waking up each day, being healthy, my friendships, my, my, the loves of my life, the people that I spend time with, the, you know, that, the beauty of that and being surrounded by people who care about you and who feed your soul. Like, um, I think that's been a, like, the best and you're one of them for me you're really like I'm just so privileged to know you and to to have you in my life and I love what you do and like for me that is what I'm really grateful for being surrounded by wonderful people especially like you I'm thank really you grateful. so much thank you again for your time for sharing the beauty of your work and being thank such you. an inspiration to this world Heidi Thank you, Andrea. I'm so thrilled to have done this with you. I'll cherish it.